volume on the monitor, please. The monitor. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 to 15. First Timothy chapter 4, from verse 13 to 15. I read, Paul is speaking to Timothy. Paul said to him, he says, Till I come, give attention to reading, give attention to exhortation, give attention to doctrine. Verse 14, it says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely or give yourself wholly to them that your progress or your profiting may appear or may be evident to them, to all. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my message that I started last week that I've titled, Give Yourself Holy. Give yourself holy, and this is part two. Give yourself holy, and this is part two. Christianity is a life of sacrifice. The foundation of Christianity is, uh, is sacrifice. Christianity has a foundation of sufferings. These are things that Jesus went through. Jesus sacrificed his life. Jesus suffered a lot, and so on and so forth. So. Christianity is not a bed of roses. Most of the time when people give their life to Christ, we tell them that, oh, when you give your life to Christ, everything is going to be all right. It's not true. Sometimes everything is not going to be all right. But the only way we have to live this walk of faith is to give ourselves holy. Paul is writing to a young pastor, Timothy, whom he's, he's training. And he said, till I come, give attention to reading, give attention to exhortation, and do not neglect the gifts that is in you, which was given to you by, the, by prophecy with the laying on of hands by the eldership. And then he went forth to tell him that meditate on these things that has been given to you. Give yourself wholly to them. Not partly. Give yourself wholly. Give yourself entirely to them. That your profiting may appear to all. Or your progress may appear to all. That means whatever you give yourself to will give back to you. Let's quickly look at reasons why we must give ourselves holy. Jude 1 verse 3 and 4. Reasons why we must give ourselves holy. It says, Blessed, beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered for all the saints. We must contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to all the saints. For there are certain men that have crept into the church unnoticed or unaware who long ago were marked out for this condemnation and these are ungodly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ so the reason why we have to contend we have to give ourselves holy we have to give ourselves holy is because the very gospel that we have, this gospel that we preach, 
was given to us on the foundation of contention. People have to fight for it. People died for it. Some were, were cut into two. They were divided into two. Some were crucified upside down. Some were beheaded. Some were boiled in hot oil. Some their intestines were taken out whilst they were alive. Some were buried alive. They did not give up. They did not deny Jesus. So we have to give all diligence to this gospel. Are you following me? Because we, the, this gospel was delivered to us on the platform of contention. The elders of faith contended for the gospel. They fought for the gospel. They stood for the gospel. If we don't fight for the gospel, these certain men that have crept into the, into the church, they creep in unaware to destroy the sheep. They get in to destroy the sheep. Are you following me? So, question we want to ask is, when is the right time to give yourself holy? When is the right time to give yourself holy? The right time to give yourself holy is now. Not tomorrow, it's now. Now is the right time. So Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 to 16, it says, While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion of some. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Look at that. For some, when they heard, did provoke, howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt led by Moses. So that means, even though Moses was given as a deliverer, not every child of God, not every Israelite came out of Egypt. Some stayed behind. Because when they heard the gospel, when they heard about giving themselves holy, they didn't. They decided to stay behind. Are you following me? They decided to stay behind. So it's time to give yourself holy. Remember, what you give yourself to will give back to you. Please remember that anything you give to will always give back to you. If you give yourself to reading as a student, reading will make you successful in your exams. What you give yourself to will give back to you. If you give yourself to God, God will give, give himself back to you. Last week I said, don't, don't, if you give 1% to God, don't expect God to give you 100% attention back. James chapter 4 verse 8 it says draw nigh to God and God will draw nigh to you don't give God 1% and expect God to give you 100% no it doesn't work that way when you draw near to God God will draw near to you so if you give yourself wholly to God God will give himself wholly to you if you give yourself to seven people the people you serve today they will serve you tomorrow Give yourself holy. This year, God is calling all of us as a church to give ourselves holy. God is calling you to give yourself holy. While some of us are giving ourselves holy, some are slacking behind. The Bible says that when it was time for deliverance, some people did not come out of Egypt. They stayed behind. Don't be those who stay behind. This year, don't give yourself, don't give to God 50%. No, give 100%. Don't give 99.9% .9 to God. Give 100% to God. That is what it means to give ourselves holy. This year, decide that you are going to give yourself holy to be a strong Christian. To be a Christian who loves God wholeheartedly. This year, don't backslide from the faith. Be fervent in prayer 
and strong in the studying of the word of God. In our year of the Holy Spirit, you have to give yourself wholly to soul winning. This year, win, do, do everything possible to draw all your relatives to Christ. All your relatives who don't know Jesus, this is the year where you have to lead them to Christ. Use what is happening around you. Look at what is happening. Let them know that if you are alive today, it's not because of how smart you are. Many who are smarter than them have died and gone. They are here because God wants them saved. So use what is going on around you. Use this pandemic to lead them to Christ. Don't take your family and friends to parties. Don't take your family and friends to nightclubs. Take them to church. Whilst church is now online, what you can do is invite them. Share the link. It will not cost you anything. As a matter of fact, you gain by sharing the link. There was somebody who, who nearly died through COVID-19 who shared a, a testimony, one Peter Ndugu, who said somebody led him to this church. And by watching faithfully, that was what brought his healing. He would have died. He would have died through COVID-19. But by the grace of God, God preserved him. Why don't you share the gospel with others? Share the gospel of Jesus Christ with your colleagues, with your neighbors. Minimum in your phone, you have more than 200 contacts every Sunday when it's time for church service. All you have to do is click the link and forward it to others. That's how you share the gospel. That's how you give yourself holy. Or share the link on your Facebook page. Or share the YouTube link on your Facebook page. Or on your WhatsApp link. Share it. Share the link. That's how we know you are giving yourself holy. As we are giving ourselves holy, some are behind. Some have been left in Egypt. Well, it's your choice. Whilst Moses was delivering the children of Israel. The Bible says that some decided to stay in bondage. Some decided to stay in slavery. When you hear of salvation, when you hear of giving yourself holy, don't harden your heart. Don't say, oh, the pastor wants something from me. No one wants something from you. We are encouraging you to give yourself holy to God. Amen. Become a change agent in your family this year and in the community that you live. Let everyone that you know know that you are a Christian who have given him or herself wholly to God. Anything you give 10% to doesn't work. Anything you give 5% to doesn't work. God expects you to give 100% of your life. Examine your life and, and ask yourself, are, am I giving enough to God? Am I giving enough time prayer to God? Am I praying enough? Am I fasting enough? Am I giving enough? Don't be a sycophant. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't say you love God and yet your heart is far away from God. Jesus said, these people love me with their lips, but they are, their heart is very far. Loving God must be with your heart. Give yourself holy. It's like swimming pool. You jump into the swimming pool holy. You immerse yourself entirely. Others are giving. You are not giving. Others are serving. You are not serving. In this time of the lockdown, you haven't called the church that you belong to, the church that you go to, to find out what you can do to serve. You haven't called your pastor to find out how, how they are doing. You have stopped tithing. You have stopped giving. You're not giving the, yourself holy. That's not what it means to give yourself holy. You give holy. Give yourself holy. Give yourself holy to the things of God. You have not stopped eating. You're still eating. It's locked down, but you're still eating. Are you following me? So it's time to give yourself holy. What happens when we give ourselves holy? What happens? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. 
Paul said, give yourself wholly to them and look at what will happen. It says that your profiting will appear to how many? To all. Your profiting or your progress will be evident to all. The reason why the world is not noticing you is because you are not giving holy. You are not giving your, heart, your life holy to God. Sometimes I'm amazed how some Christians behave. They forget all God has done for them. They are not, they are not part of what God is doing. This is the time you should know that serving God is real. Serving God is important. Why in a time like this you, you have to be encouraged to serve God? You want somebody to call you to wake you up to watch the live stream? No, it doesn't work that way. When it's time for heaven, nobody's going to call you. You have to be ready. A few weeks, weeks ago, I preached on how people miss big opportunities in life. There were five foolish virgins who missed heaven because they did not give themselves holy. Listen, heaven is real. Hell is real. It will be shocking people who are going to miss heaven because they were not ready, because they were lackadaisical, because they were lukewarm. This is not the time to be lukewarm. Paul said to Timothy, if you give yourself wholly to these things, your profiting will appear to all, not to some, to all. When we give ourselves wholly, our profiting appears to the whole world. As we give ourselves wholly to the vision of this church, our profiting will appear to all. That is when we hear from God saying to us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. How many of you will want to hear God say to you, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. How many of you? How many of you? How many of you? Eh, how many of you will want to hear from God? Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. The key is in giving yourself wholly to God. You can't give yourself 2% to God and expect God to give you 100% back. It doesn't work that way. Anybody who's taught you is misleading you. Somebody will say, but pastor, what about grace? Grace is not, listen, listen. The existence of grace does not negate the absence of the law. Paul said, shall grace abound so we continue to sin? No, God forbid. The existence of grace doesn't mean we should live an unholy life. No. So it's time to give yourself wholly to God. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to 26 Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to 3. It says, So you shall serve the Lord. That's what it means to give yourself holy. You shall serve the Lord your God. You see, the moment you get to the point where you think you are too big to serve God, then God will be too small to bless you. If you are proud and arrogant and you think you are too big to serve God, then God will be too small to bless you. It says, you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and he will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. God says, I will fulfill the number of your days. Glory be to God. You see, this is what it means to serve God, to give God everything. When you give God your entire life, there shall be no miscarriage in your life. There shall be no barrenness in your land. How does that happen? It said, if you shall serve the Lord, he will bless if you shall serve the Lord, he will bless. Your responsibility is to serve the Lord.
God's responsibility is to bless. Thou shalt serve the Lord and he will bless. You can't expect the blessing and not be willing to serve. Humble yourself. There is no future in the kingdom of God for those who are arrogant and proud. This is the time for you to call the church, the church that you go to, and ask your pastor, Pastor, what can I do? Where can I serve? You can serve from your house. The church is closed, but you can still serve with your gifts. You can serve with your talents. Do something. Let the church see your commitment. Some of you don't want to be identified with the church you go to. Yet it is that same church that has blessed you all these years. It is that same church that blessed your marriage. It is that same church that blessed, dedicated your children. It is that same church, that pastor that you go into uh, a corner somewhere and criticize him or her with others. Is that same church that has been that pastor that has been praying for you day and night that you should be blessed? Stop gossiping about the church. Stop dividing the church. Stop spoiling the church. Stop spoiling the church of Jesus Christ. T.D. Jake said something. He said he is 62 years old or 60 something years old. He said he has never seen a gossiper prosper. He has never seen a wealthy gossiper. He has never seen a, 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 a multi-millionaire uh, gossiper or backbiter. Backbiters always stay behind. Give yourself holy. It's time to give yourself holy. Give with give yourself with your children. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my entire house, we will serve the Lord. Are you following me? So it's time to give yourself holy. It's time to give yourself holy. God has done so much for you. Don't be ungrateful. For ungrateful people will never prosper. Don't just be a believer who takes and not give back. When you see an elephant discharging uh, a one, one kg of manure, it is ready to go to the grave. Because on the level at which that elephant eats, it has to discharge on that level. Are you following me? That's why the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. God expects much from you in accordance to the level of what he has given to you. Hallelujah. When you give yourself holy, God blesses the works of your hands. When you give yourself holy, he blesses the works of your hands. The works of your hands begin to prosper. I have seen in this church families that have given themselves holy that God is blessing the works of their hands. When you give yourself holy, God blesses your business. I've seen families in this church whose businesses are flourishing. Because they have given themselves holy. When you give yourself holy, your family is blessed. I have seen families in this church who are blessed beyond measure. Blessed beyond measure. Why? Because they have given themselves holy. When you give yourself holy, sicknesses and diseases are taken away from you. You will not know any sickness. I can't remember the last time I was sick. I have given myself holy. I can never be sick because I've given myself holy to God. Listen, the favor of God goes ahead of you and open doors for you when you give yourself holy to God. It's time for us to give ourselves holy. Don't give yourself 2%. Don't give yourself 1% to God. Give yourself holy. Listen, the only way you and I can succeed in this year is to give ourselves how? Holy to God and to the things of God. 
Give yourself entirely. Give yourself wholly. When was the last time you prayed for your pastor? When was the last time you took 30 minutes to pray for your man of God? When was the last time you took one hour just to pray for the expansion of the kingdom of God? When was the last time you took an hour aside just to pray for souls to be, to be added to the kingdom of God? You see where your heart is? Jesus said where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Your heart is not in the kingdom, so you don't pray for the kingdom. If your heart is in the kingdom of God, you'll pray for the expansion of the kingdom. Are you following me? When your heart is in the things of God, nobody has to encourage you. Nobody has to encourage you to come to church. Nobody has to encourage you to, to go to go and 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 and, and save. Hallelujah. You see, you're sitting down there, you haven't given your hearts to the Lord holy. So what I'm saying, some of you are getting offended. You know why you're getting offended? Because you haven't given your heart holy. You haven't given your life holy to God. You're offended. And be careful. Offenses might take you to hell. I'm helping you. They say, oh, but I've given so much. Is it not enough? No. Jesus gave his entire life. He gave his life on the cross for you. What are you giving back? Do you think what you have given to God is enough? No, it's not enough. You have to wait for God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. God must be the one who must say it. Don't think you have given God enough. Glory be to God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things that the world is chasing will come chasing after you. All the things that the world is chasing. All the things that the world is running after will come running after you if you will give yourself wholly to God. The key is in seeking first the kingdom of God. Don't criticize the church. Don't criticize what God is doing in the church. Especially if God has been good to you through the church. Never criticize the church. The moment you criticize the church, the wrath of God comes upon you. So it's time to give yourself holy. Give everything. Give everything to God. God is not happy with what you are giving to him. You are asking God, have I not given enough? No, you haven't given enough. God is not happy with what you are giving. He wants you to give everything. Because he gave everything. God gave everything to you and I. So you and I must also give everything. When was the last time you took one hour to pray for your man of God? When was the last time you took one hour to pray for the expansion of the kingdom of God? Even come on, come on, take, take your phone to share the link with your family and friends you don't want to do it and you claim you love God no you don't love God you don't love God you love yourself remember what the Bible says in the last days the love of many will grow cold has your love for God gone cold that's why you're not giving yourself holy it said in the last days the love of many will wax cold. Many will be lovers of men rather than lovers of God. Are you following what I'm saying? Glory be to God. It's time to give yourself holy. Give your family holy to God. Wake your family up to serve God. We have all these services 
Some are not waking up to even watch. Yet we have thousands watching from across the world. Some are right in this church who are not committed. In this church, some are not committed to what God is doing. Why do you think God will be committed to you? You are not committed to God and you want God to commit himself to you. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's time for you to give yourself holy. Give yourself how? Holy. Paul said to Timothy, give yourself holy. Paul is telling Timothy, if you are looking for an example of someone who has given himself holy, I'm an example. I'm in prison and I'm writing to you. Why am I in prison? I'm in prison because I've given myself wholly to the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you following what I'm saying? So it's time to give yourself wholly. Not 10%. It's time to give everything to God. The Bible says, and what is it that we have that we did not receive? What is it that you have that you think came from you? Everything you have was given to you by the grace of God. So it's time for us to give ourselves holy. Paul said, if you give yourself holy, he said, your profiting will appear to all. If no man is seeing what you're doing, if no one is not discovering you, it's because you have not given yourself to, you have not given yourself holy. When you give yourself wholly, your progress, your profit will appear to all. It will be evident. Have you seen a man that is diligent in his business? He doesn't stand before mean men. He stands before great men. You want to be discovered? Give your life to that cause. Give your life to that mission. Give your life to that purpose. Have you seen footballers who are making it in life? It's 11 people, 22 people in the field, but one is playing better than the rest. Why? Because that one who is playing better than the rest has given himself wholly to training. Giving himself to training. When everybody is sleeping, when all the other players probably are going to the nightclubs and, and fooling around with girls and so on and so forth and drinking, the one that is being noticed by the world is giving himself wholly to training. Hours on end. Have you seen a golfer who is making waves? You think he just come takes the, the stick and then he just plays and then that's it. And then the whole world. No, it doesn't happen that way. Have you seen an athlete, a runner, somebody running? Ask them how many years they prepare, they practice before they come and run 100 meters. Before they come and run 1-400 meters. They practice for years. Years on end. On a daily basis, giving themselves wholly. And then when they make it in life, you are clapping. You say, oh, look at how lucky this one is. It is not luck. It is diligence. They have given themselves holy. Holy. From today, some of you need to repent and give yourself holy. The church that you go to, you need to repent. You need to call your pastor or the leaders in that church and, and say, I am sorry. I have backslided. I have become lukewarm. It's time to be hot again. It's time for God to revive us again. The Bible says that in the midst of the year, God will revive his works again. My prayer is that in the midst of this year, God will revive you again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lukewarmness is not acceptable in the kingdom of God. God says in the book of Revelation, he said, I, I, if you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out. You can't be lukewarm. God hates lukewarmness. Are you following me? Some of you are watching today, you are Christians, but nobody knows that you are Christian, not even in your family. Your family members don't know that you are a Christian. You are lukewarm. 
You are sinning. You are just like those in the world. You and the world, there is no difference between you. God said, I'll, I'll rather have you hot or cold. Revelation 3.16 It says, so then, because you are lukewarm, and you are neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I will spew you out of my mouth. It's time to be hot for God. Give yourself holy. Give yourself holy. Give yourself holy. I said give yourself holy. I said give yourself holy. Those who don't give themselves holy have no place in this world. The reason why you are behind in life is not because somebody has cursed you. It's because you have not given yourself wholly to God. You have not given yourself wholly to God. It's time to give ourselves wholly. 100%. 200%. 1000%. You say, Pastor, if I give myself wholly, what is going to happen? God says, the Bible says, it says you're profiting. Your progress will appear to how many? To all. Do you think this church is where it is today? Because we are just doing nothing. We have given ourselves holy. I have given myself holy. I cannot speak for you. But I have given myself. I have laid myself on the altar of sacrifice. For God to use. This is why I can't handle those who are lukewarm around me. I can't handle them. If you are lukewarm, I can't handle you. You can't come close to me. Are you following what I'm saying? You can't be in this church that God is using to impact the globe and be lukewarm. You have to be hot for Jesus. Are you following me? Because remember, you and I are going to stand before God one day. We are going to stand before God and God is going to judge all of us. God is going to judge you and I on the basis of what we rendered to the, to the expansion of his kingdom. It's time to give ourselves how holy. It's time. It's time to give yourself holy. It's time to, nobody is going to beg you to give yourself holy. Nobody. That's why I have never begged anybody in this church. Nobody is going to beg you. If you are waiting for the pastor to call you, to say, oh, please come and help us, you are lying. You are lying. <laughs> you can't help God. How can you, a bicycle, want to help a, tr a tractor or a trailer? Let's just say God is a trailer and you are a bicycle. Can you pull God? Can you help God? Can you push God? No, you can't. Give yourself holy. Let this year be a year where you give. Not this year. Let this week. Let today be a day that you say to yourself, I am going to give myself holy to God. Some of you, you've never read the Bible since this lockdown on your own personal self by yourself some of you even watching this live stream now you don't have a bible with you when i quote the scriptures you are not writing it down you say oh, the pastor is not in my house he can't see me you see i wake up early i dress up to stand before you and preach just like i'm preaching in church but you are in your house you are in your pajamas. You are lying in your bed. You are Some of you are even sleeping on me now whilst I'm preaching. I'm preaching my entire heart to you, but you are sleeping. You are sleeping. You are sleeping. You are not giving yourself holy. Who do you think you are fooling? You can't fool me. Your reward is God. Your reward is in God. The Bible says that God will reward each and every one of us diligently according to those who seek him diligently Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 God will reward all of us diligently he is a diligent rewarder he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him 
So don't think you are here to please man. I'm not here to please anyone. I'm not here to please you. You did not call me. God called me. I have, there's no man anywhere in the world, no man or no woman, who can stand anywhere and open their mouth and say, if it is not them, this church will not be where it is. No man. I've never knocked on any man's door. I give people opportunity. I open doors for people. I will give you an opportunity. That's who I am. But you can't stand anywhere and say, oh, you did this. You did what? If you are the one doing it, the church will still not be flourishing in a lockdown. In a lockdown, the church is still flourishing. In a lockdown, we are expanding globally. In a lockdown, thousands are watching. Tens of thousands are watching. And you stand there and say you are the helper of God. How can you, a tiny little human being, help God? You can't help God. You can't help God. So no man can stand anywhere and say, I am the doer of this. You are not the doer of this. God is the doer of this. Everything good happening in this church, God is the doer of it. Glory be to God. So it's time to give yourself wholly to God. Don't be lukewarm. Don't be casual around God. It is a risk to be casual with the things of God. Paul puts it this way. Those who don't love God are accursed. So that means it is even a curse not to love God. So loving God adds to you. It doesn't add to the pastor. It doesn't add to the church. It doesn't add anything to me. It adds everything to you. When I tell you to pray, it doesn't add anything to me. When I tell you to fast, it doesn't add anything to me. When I tell you to live holy, it doesn't add anything to me. It adds everything to you. Are you following what I'm saying? So it's time to give yourself holy. Give your whole life to God. Put your life on the altar of sacrifice. Like Isaac, lay your life down on the altar and let God use you to the glory of his name. It's time to give ourselves holy. I said it's time to give ourselves holy. I said it's time to give ourselves holy. Jesus is coming soon and he's coming for a church that has given itself holy. A church that is giving itself entirely. Are you following what I'm saying? It's time. It's time. It's time. The time is not tomorrow. The time is now. Because you don't know when Jesus is coming. Jesus can show up at any time. Jesus can come now as I'm preaching. Will you be ready to go when he comes? Listen, heaven is real. Hell is real. It's time to give your whole life to God. It's time. It's time. I don't want anyone who is lukewarm around me. God has not called me to raise, to lead a lukewarm church. You are either on fire for God or not. Those who are lukewarm for God might not, might not make heaven. It's time to be on fire. It's, stop looking for excuses. We are soldiers in the army of God. Stop looking for excuses. Stop looking for excuses. Stop looking for excuses. It's time to give your life to God. Give your whole life. Give your life holy. Give your life holy. Give your life holy. Give everything. When it's time, give everything. Give everything. I am not here just to just to just to pamper you. I'm here to encourage you to give your whole life to God. Jesus gave his whole life to us, for us. Why are you giving 10% to God and expecting a million percent from him? Why are you giving 1% to God and expect God to give you anything back? Even when it comes to tithes and offerings, many don't want to give. No wonder you are struggling because God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. You sow 0%, 
you reap zero percent. God only gives seed to the sower. The reason why you are not experiencing favor is because the heavens are shut over you. You are not giving yourself holy. You are not giving yourself holy to God. Why do you think God will give himself holy to you? God wants to do something new in your life, but if you are going to rely on your mind, your local carnal mind, you will be stuck where you are. You'll be stuck. You'll be stuck. It's time to come free. It's time to come out of every curse that has caused you to be bound where you are. Any curse that is destroying your family, the only way you can come out of that curse is when you give yourself holy. Give yourself holy to God. Give yourself holy to God. If this is the only message I preach today that will get you to be on fire for God it's time there are too many lukewarm Christians around today too many lukewarm Christians God hates lukewarmness God hates lukewarmness be on fire for God since I gave my life to Jesus nobody has ever encouraged me I never had a pastor to follow me up I look for the way to follow after Jesus. I'm following hard after him. I'm following hard after him. You also must follow hard after him. God only rewards those who are following hard after him. It's time to come out of the lukewarmness. God is sick and tired of a lukewarm church. A church without a voice. A church without power. A church that a so lukewarm cannot transform its generation. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. How can we influence the world if we are not on fire for him? How can we preserve the earth if we ourselves are perverted? How can a perverted church preserve a perverse nation? How can a perverted church preserve a perverted world? The only way we can preserve this world is when we have given ourselves holy to God. Holy to God. Holy to God. Holy to God. Christianity is not a cup of tea and biscuits. No. Christianity is a walk of faith. It's a war called for men and women to die for Jesus. Many are not willing to die for Jesus any longer because they have not given themselves wholly to God. Give yourself. Give yourself wholly. Give yourself wholly. Don't be offended at what I'm saying to you. This is the Spirit of God speaking to you. You know you have backslided. You know you are not in the faith. You are just in the church. Using the colloquia of the church. Using the language of the church. There are even pastors watching me now. Who have, who have backslided. Who are not in the faith any longer. That's why the Bible tells us. In Jude 3. It said beware. Some have crept into the, into the church unaware. Verse 4. They have crept into the church unaware. They have crept in. Some claim they are pastors, but they are demons. They are devils. It's time to give yourself holy. Give yourself holy. Give yourself holy to God. 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 Give yourself to the ministry holy. Give yourself to the church holy. Give yourself to prayer holy. Give yourself to fasting holy. Give yourself to the things of God. Give yourself. Give yourself holy. God will not force you. But he's waiting on you. He's knocking on your door. He's knocking on the door of your heart for you to give yourself to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not the time to backslide. You don't want to miss heaven. This is not the time to backslide. This is not the time to be lukewarm. This is the time to give yourself holy to Jesus.
Jesus. Jesus is coming soon and he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming for a church that's on fire. He's coming for a church that is hot. He's coming for a great church. That's why it's time for us to give ourselves holy. Paul said to Timothy, give yourself holy. Give yourself holy. I can't preach this to you if I have not given myself holy. I've given myself holy. Holy. Holy to God. I've given myself holy to the kingdom. I've given myself holy to the church. I am not in ministry because of what I'll get. God has already blessed me. I am not in ministry because of money. I don't preach for money. God has already blessed me. Are you following me? God knows my heart. He knows my heart because I have given myself holy. When are you going to give yourself? The time is now. Don't say tomorrow. You might not have tomorrow, my dear friend. You might not have tomorrow, my dear friend, my dear brother, my dear sister. You might not have tomorrow because tomorrow only belongs to God. Give yourself holy. Many have backslided. But it's time to come back. It's time to come back to the faith. It's time to come back and be on fire for Jesus. It's time to go back to the first love. It's time to go back to the first love. It's time to go back to the first love. The first love is what God is calling for. It's time for you to go back to your first love. Your first love for God. Your first love for Jesus. Your first love for the Holy Spirit. It's time to fall in love with him afresh. It's time to love him again. Give yourself holy. Give yourself holy that your profiting may appear to all. You say, I've given enough, Pastor. You haven't given enough. God is telling you, you have not given enough. It's time to give yourself holy. And as you give yourself holy, guess what will happen? Your profiting will appear to all. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray with you wherever you are. I want to lead you to Christ. It begins by giving yourself holy. To give yourself holy, you have to give your whole life to Jesus. Give your whole heart to him. Not give 1% or 19 Give your whole life to Jesus. So I want to lead you to Christ. Say this with me, Lord Jesus. I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for these precious ones who have given their lives to you. I ask that you bless them, lift them up in Jesus' name. Let them give their life to you entirely, that their profiting may appear to all. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, there's a, I want you to go to our website, solutionchapel.org, www.solutionchapel.org. I want you to go on there. There's a form I want you to fill for us. And then we were going to send you some nice gifts that will help you. Free gift to help you to grow. Free gift to help you to become all that God has destined you to become in the name of Jesus. If you also gave your life to Christ and you, you cannot send an email, you can call. You can WhatsApp us. The numbers have appeared on your screen. You can WhatsApp us, call us, and there are pastors waiting now to pray with you, to pray for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. 
Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you peace on every side. May he cause you to be the head and not the tail. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. Have a glorious day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.